Hello and uh, welcome you all for uh, today's class. Uh, we will briefly go through the last uh, lectures uh, points, main points. Uh, like we discussed uh, the uh, few aspects of the uh, dihydroxylation of olefins and uh, towards the end uh, we saw that uh, the uh, it is important that we need to uh, uh, have uh, the co-oxidants which allow the dihydroxylation to take place without over oxidation. So, there should be uh, no over oxidation that for that purpose we saw that uh, the uh, use of uh, tertiary butyl hydro peroxide or NOMO uh, was utilized and it has become very popular as far as the uh, dihydroxylation of osmium tetroxide is concerned. And then uh, it was uh, found that um, uh, we can also uh, make use of uh, the uh, chiral ligands, uh, the chiral ligands uh, such as uh, pyridine based molecules can allow uh, the uh, dihydroxylation to take place and uh, the enantiomeric purity was found to be reasonably good, but not very high. So then it was uh, found that uh, the, uh, the complex between the ligand which is a chiral ligand and uh, the uh, osmium tetroxide uh, OSO4 should not be uh, too tight, it should not be too tightly bound. Uh, neither it should be too loose. Uh, in either case, uh, there should not be um, uh, any uh, advantage because if it is too tightly bound, then we have to use a large excess of the ligand. And if it is too uh, loosely bound, then of course the enantiomeric uh, purity will be low. In that respect, it was found that uh, synchrona alkaloids uh, were uh, a good compromise between the two and it was uh, used for the uh, purpose of dihydroxylation by Sharpless. And initially uh, although the NMO was used, it was found that the NMO uh, leads to uh, uh, the uh, 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 optical purity of the di hydroxylated molecule being low in some cases as low as 6 to 8 percent and therefore it was not uh, a, the best choice. Uh, so the Sharpless introduced uh, K3, Fe, C and 6 uh, and um, potassium carbonate in tertiary butanol water uh, as, a, as a good source for the reoxidant uh, of the reoxidation of the osmium tetroxide. Uh, based byproduct which is osmium 6 and therefore it is uh, water soluble and therefore the hydrolysis of the osmium 6 uh, which is ligand bound occurs faster and then regeneration of osmium 6 to osmium 8 also occurs with this. Then of course we saw the spacers were used and uh, which led to high enantiomeric uh, purity of the product and also it was found that in the case of uh, tri substituted olefins, the use of methyl sulfonamide also gave high enantiomeric uh, purity and, uh, uh, and the rate of the reaction was also high. So, these are the various things uh, that were uh, seen. And uh, now we look at the reduction of the um, different types of uh, uh, organic molecules in an asymmetric fashion. If you recall, uh, we had discussed the, uh, the Nobel uh, Prize uh, to be given for oxidation and reduction. So, the uh, oxidation based uh, uh, work was uh, awarded a Nobel Prize to 
uh, Sharpless and the reduction based Nobel Prize was given to two people William Knowles and Ryoji Noyori. So if you look at it once again, so the 2001 Nobel Prize was given uh, one half jointly to as you can see it here, uh, one half was given to uh, K. B. Sharpless uh, like about whose work we have already discussed uh, for both catalytic uh, asymmetric epoxidation and uh, diadoxylation and the work of William Knowles and Ryoji Noyori for uh, chirally catalyzed hydrogenation reactions and of course many other reductions by Noyori especially were given the Nobel Prize uh, for 2001. So we will not get into the details of these now and these are the two people who did uh, the reduction part of it. So now we will look at their work. The first uh, industrial catalytic asymmetric synthesis was actually done by William Knowles. William Knowles who was working in a in company like Monsanto company in United States and his aim was to, to get uh, the uh, synthesis of L-DOPA uh, which is useful in the treatment of Parkinson's disease in as high enantiomeric purity as possible. Uh, if you recall we had uh, discussed that uh, whatever optically active molecule that we need to uh, use as a medicine should be uh, in that particular optically pure form because the other enantiomer could be uh, uh, not useful at all. So uh, in the first uh, industrial synthesis of this rare amino acid L-DOPA was actually uh, done by the uh, contribution of uh, William Knowles uh, and uh, basically he, he spent a lot of time to find a proper match uh, between ligand and substrate to achieve synthetically useful efficiencies. And it was found that the best substrate was an enamide precursor that led to amino acids. So uh, that uh, hydrogenation of such molecules was the main purpose for William Knowles work. This is what is the uh, enamide which was uh, hydrogenated in the presence of this particular uh, rhodium complex and uh, where the uh, chirality comes from this uh, diapamp which is uh, in this case is RR uh, uh, configurated and that gave the uh, hydrogenated product as 95% uh, enantiomerically pure and which led eventually for uh, demethylation and deacetylation and uh, then you get the corresponding L-DOPA which was optically pure. And that is how the first synthesis which is named as Monsanto synthesis was basically done by William Knowles. And that is the reason why he, he was given the Nobel Prize for this, this work. Now how did Noyori come into picture? Uh, so the Nobel Foundation cites the kinetic data suggests uh, that, that at room temperature the oxidative addition of hydrogen is rate limiting for the overall reaction. So this was just uh, of the various kinds of work that Noyori has done it, it suggests that this is what is the rate limiting step. When a appropriate chiral phosphine ligand and proper reaction conditions are chosen, high enantioselectivity is achieved. This is what the uh, Noyori has really addressed it. If a diphosphine ligand of C2 symmetry is used, uh, the two diastereomers of the enamide coordination complex can be produced because the olefin interacts with either the re phase or the C phase. So if we have this enamide which is what uh, we are uh, uh, seeing it in the, in the case of uh, uh, William Knowles work and uh, obviously uh, when the uh, attachment of the hydrogen occurs from either side, uh, we are basically trying to induce a diastereomeric transition state. And then the two of them should be differentiated, uh, two of them should have uh, a large gap and then we can get the corresponding uh, uh, enantiomeric purity uh, through uh, diastereomeric transition state. 
So, this interaction leads to enantiomerically pure uh, phenyl and aline products and, and of course uh, various kinds of uh, diastereomeric rhodium complexes uh, have been utilized for a large number of uh, uh, asymmetric reduction work. Uh, that is where the noyori came into the picture. So, in order to develop uh, improved asymmetric catalyst, the energy difference between the diastereomeric activated complexes has to be increased to yield a larger enantiomeric uh, purity or enantiomeric excess. So, as I said that if uh, a double bond, uh, say for example, the same double bond as we saw in the case of uh, uh, Knowles work, if this comes in contact with uh, optically pure um, uh, ligand uh, where say you have an R star and which has uh, say uh, R configuration. If that comes in contact with this then there are two possibilities. One is that you have uh, a possibility of uh, uh, having uh, this particular asymmetric center being generated as R or you have a possibility of uh, this asymmetric center being generated as, as S. And uh, in the transition state uh, when the double bond is still there and the asymmetry is being induced here the ligand which is present uh, having an R configuration should give us RR as a diastereomer and this one should give S R as diastereomeric transition state. So, these are the two different diastereomeric transition states that will form when the ligand uh, uh, modified uh, hydrogen uh, comes in contact with the double bond which is prochiral and there are two possibilities one R configuration to come and the other S configuration to come and if the ligand has say for example only one asymmetric center and has R configuration which is 100 percent. So, we are basically looking at this uh, RR versus SR as two uh, diastereomeric transition states. And the larger the gap energy difference between these two uh, diastereomeric transition state will be the larger will be the enantiomeric purity of the uh, molecule that we get at the end of the reduction. So, this is what is important for industrial application and uh, such a large uh, gap was basically addressed by the uh, work of uh, uh, Ryoji Noyori who uh, introduced uh, several different kinds of ligands and several different kinds of catalysts for making uh, the high enantiomerically pure reduced products. So, Nobel Foundation further cites Noyori's discovery of the binab ruthenium complex catalyst was a major advance in stereoselective organic synthesis. The scope of the application of these catalysts is far reaching. These chiral ruthenium complexes serve as catalyst precursors for the high enantiomeric selective hydrogenation of a range of alpha, beta and beta gamma unsaturated carboxylic acids. So, this is how the uh, Noyori's uh, work was basically uh, cited by uh, Nobel uh, Foundation. Now, what does Noyori have to say? Noyori says that recent efforts have been mainly directed to the refinement of the original process using standard dehydroamino acids as substrates, uh, basically enamides and highly uh, enantioselective hydrogenation of olefin substrates lacking acyl amino functionality remain difficult. So, the kind of uh, substrate that was used by William Knowles was found to be good for the uh, uh, preparation of L-DOPA, but then Noyori also looked at the hydrogenation of uh, other uh, double bonds which were lacking the acyl amino functionality. That is where and of course, during the process he developed uh, introduced the S binap and R binap as two uh, atrop isomer based chiral uh, diphosphine ligands and of course, they are C2 symmetry based uh, ligands and these are the two which uh, were basically introduced by Noyori uh, in 1980 
and uh, for which uh, he uh, really uh, uh, did a lot of work to get to the highly enantiomerically pure uh, different types of molecules. Now besides alpha acyl amino acrylic acids or esters leading to uh, L-DOPA the same enamides which we have talked many times. Uh, the a variety of other substrates were also hydrogenated in excellent chemical yield and high enantiomer selectivity. Uh, but then um, the rhodium catalyst is limited to uh, acyl amino functionality. Basically rhodium based the uh, catalysts having different uh, ligands particularly uh, the kind of ligand that Knowles used or the BINAP were used and therefore the molecules were hydrogenated where this uh, uh, enamide type which were very useful for the synthesis of L-DOPA. But there were um, these rhodium catalysts were not particularly useful in some other uh, context and therefore uh, Noyori uh, developed many other uh, catalysts and ligands to uh, overcome this and apply new uh, methods for the reduction of different types of molecules. Now rhodium based catalysts using uh, different BINAPs have been utilized in the isomerization of uh, certain olefins and they have been used in the industrial application for the synthesis of a variety of uh, important optically pure molecules. For example, if we uh, start with uh, a prochiral allyl amine of this type where the uh, double bond geometry is Z and react it with this uh, rhodium catalyst where the BINAP has R configuration. Then the uh, enamine that is observed after the isomerization of this particular double bond is of this kind where the absolute configuration is as shown. Now the same prochiral allylamine when it is reacted with uh, the same rhodium based catalyst but with different uh, BINAP that is now S BINAP then what we get is this kind of chiral enamine in which the absolute configuration of this asymmetric center is opposite to that of what we observed with R BINAP. Now if we change the uh, geometry of the prochiral allylamine from Z to E and react with the same rhodium catalyst but with R BINAP, then what we get is the chiral enamine of this kind with uh, the uh, absolute configuration of the asymmetric center being as shown here which is opposite to what was observed here. Now the same allylamine when it is reacted with the, the same rhodium catalyst but now with S BINAP as a chiral ligand then what we get is this type of chiral enamine. What it means that when we start with a prochiral allylamine of a specific uh, geometry of the double bond and react it with uh, a uh, particular rhodium catalyst with a R BINAP, we get a chiral enamine of certain absolute configuration and with the same uh, allylamine when it is reacted with the rhodium catalyst of uh, having a BINAP of opposite configuration, then we get the chiral enamine of opposite configuration. So uh, these type of uh, chiral enamines have been utilized uh, in the synthesis of a variety of important uh, compounds which are optically pure and the optical purity has been found to be in the range of 90 to 99 percent. As one can see that the R group here has a lot of scope. Uh, for example, of this kind of alkyls or phenyls and various kinds of substitutions can be utilized. So, it is an easy uh, method for converting a prochiral allylamine 
to pyrrole enamine using rhodium based catalyst and uh, binab based chiral ligands. Now, this has been utilized in the synthesis of uh, menthol uh, by a company called Takasago uh, who basically uh, have used the process developed by Noyori. So, in that process we start with uh, beta pinene uh, which of course can be written up uh, in this way also. And if we do the uh, thermal cracking uh, this the way I have shown here the arrow it breaks and it forms myrcene. This is what the myrcene is. So, you start with beta pinene and heat it and get the myrcene and when uh, butyl lithium is used along with diethylamine uh, it stops at, at, at this particular stage it does not undergo further polymerization or oligomerization it stops at this particular place as you can imagine here that if suppose lithium uh, plus uh, comes in here. Uh, then of course, you have uh, uh, chelation like this or the coordination of the lithium plus with this and the butyl lithium that NBU minus takes the proton from the, the pro, uh, di diethylamine and this diethylamine then attacks onto this and one can stop it at this stage. Because of the chelation between now nitrogen and uh, the lithium plus. And then uh, that undergoes uh, uh, the uh, uh, formation of uh, this diethyl geranyl amine which then uh, in the presence of a catalyst which is what is the different catalyst and undergoes uh, isomerization uh, in a catalytic uh, asymmetric fashion and then we get enantiomeric uh, purity which is almost like 100% uh, enantiomerically a pure molecule and we get the enamine corresponding enamine which is what is known as citronellol uh, re diethylenamine or this is the correct IUPAC name of this particular molecule. So, basically starting from beta pinene one has come all the way to here where this particular uh, asymmetric uh, center is uh, generated and an enamine is formed. Now this particular enamine can be hydrolyzed and we can go to the uh, corresponding optically pure which is more than 98 percent enantiomeric pure or citronellol is formed. This is the aldehyde uh, and when uh, zinc bromide is used this undergoes what is known as uh, carbonyl in reaction. Uh, the in reaction we will discuss later on more in detail but if suppose you have uh, an in uh, and an olefin here like this then of course uh, that undergoes upon heating or under um, some metal catalyzed reactions to form uh, basically a molecule like this. So, this is in equilibrium this is called as in reaction and uh, th that also can be done using uh, uh, an aldehyde which is what is known as carbonyl in reaction and therefore in the carbonyl in reaction when a Lewis acid like zinc bromide is used zinc bromide coordinates with the uh, oxygen of the aldehyde and then uh, we have this type of um, uh, proton uh, transfer and that leads to the formation of the corresponding alcohol and this alcohol which has now a double bond because of this in reaction can be hydrogenated and of course now during the process we have basically formed menthol. So uh, this is how the menthol uh, synthesis has been reported by Takasago uh, company in, uh, uh, in Japan where the uh, re reaction or the process has been uh, borrowed from the work of uh, Noyori. Now, uh, another uh, non enamide or non acyl amino based chemistry is uh, uh, the synthesis of esnaproxin which is an anti inflammatory agent which is formed in 97 percent enantiomeric purity and 92 percent yield uh, where this particular kind of uh, ruthenium complex was used by Noyori where uh, only 0.5 mole percent of this was used and that led 
the hydrogenation of this by using this S BINAP based uh, ruthenium complex and that led to S naproxene in a high enantiomeric purity. Yeah, likewise, uh, uh, these uh, BINAP uh, based catalysts, this or this uh, uh, have been used for the conversion of this allylic alcohol to this particular uh, 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 saturated alcohol or this saturated alcohol, they are, diff they are enantiomers of each other. So, any one of them can be made depending on which one one uses either S BINAP or I BINAP. And uh, likewise, uh, this type of uh, uh, double bond also can be uh, hydrogenated and the uh, yields and the uh, enantiomeric purity are as high as 96 to 100 percent and 98 to 100 percent with different types of substituents that have been found. So, these alkaloids of uh, isoquinoline type of alkaloids which are very useful can also be synthesized and then this uh, carbapenem antibiotic type of molecules can also be, brought, be prepared in optically pure form. As one can see that different uh, tetra, this isoquinoline type of alkaloids like tetrahydropapavarine, laudonosine, uh, tetroquinol or salsolidine, uh, nordicoglene or morphine type of molecules intermediates, they all have been synthesized by the work of uh, Noyori's um, hydrogenation uh, reactions using the catalyst based on BINAP. Uh, <coughs> now, this ruthenium BINAP catalyst also has been um, used uh, for the synthesis of uh, different types of ketones. So, although asymmetric hydrogenation of ketones is another difficult problem in chemical synthesis, a wide variety of uh, functionalized ketones are now convertible to the respective secondary alcohols through homogeneous hydrogenation with halogen containing ruthenium BINAP catalyst in alcohol media. The reaction proceeds in high energy selective and predictable fashion. This is what is important and uh, as I have shown here different types of molecules we, as you can see depending on R uh, enantiomeric purity is between uh, 83 to 96 percent such as this 92 percent here. And if this kind of molecule is to be obtained, the enantiomeric ratios uh, range from 98 to 100 percent, for example, 96 percent, 96 percent, 93 percent, and of course, different types of uh, other molecules in which uh, one can get uh, the enantiomeric purity as high as 90 to 100 percent or 98 percent, and uh, the reactions uh, can be uh, uh, used for the preparation of this kind of lactones also. Now, uh, uh, this particular hydroxy uh, ketone which is again a prochiral ketone and this uh, particular uh, ruthenium complex uh, has been utilized in the synthesis of this uh, uh, 1, 2 propane diol having R configuration here. Now, this uh, particular uh, molecule is uh, very uh, useful uh, to prepare using this uh, protocol and uh, economically it is easy to operate and uh, its preparation has been shown to be useful for prepare, producing 10 tons of such a molecule per year by using this, uh, this catalyst and therefore it is uh, very uh, commendable that such a reaction can be done uh, on a, a catalytic fashion. And this is uh, basically an intermediate for the synthesis of antibacterial uh, levofloxacine and therefore it is of high commercial utility. Now this particular molecule has also been uh, used as a catalyst uh, in the hydrogenation of uh, this enone to the corresponding uh, allylic alcohol. And as you can see that uh, it is not a hydrogenation of a double bond, but it is a reduction of the ketone and uh, it gives uh, the corresponding allylic alcohol in 90 percent enantiomeric purity, which is a building block for the synthesis of vitamin E. <coughs> Likewise, nerol uh, and geraniol can be converted into the corresponding uh, 
uh, uh, alcohol where uh, the there is a hydrogenation of the allylic alcohol part and uh, using these types of uh, uh, ruthenium catalysts. As we can see that only 0.2 mole percent of the uh, catalyst has to be used with the hydrogen 100 atmosphere uh, pressure at room temperature. And if we start with this and use R binap, we get this molecule and the same molecule can be obtained by inverting the geometry of the double bond from nerol to geraniol and use S binap and we get the same molecule with the same enantiomeric uh, purity uh, and uh, same configuration uh, and therefore both nerol and geraniols can be converted to this using different uh, uh, R binaps or S binap type of thing. And this particular molecule has also been utilized in the synthesis of vitamin E via this oxidation of the CH2OH to the corresponding aldehyde followed by Wittig reaction and a few more steps to go to vitamin E. So these are the uh, various uh, uh, applications and utility of the uh, hydrogenation reactions uh, and uh, reductions of ketones that have been developed by using uh, rhodium and uh, ruthenium based uh, uh, catalysts and uh, BINAP uh, ligands, uh, chiral ligands and also some other ligands developed by by Knowles and uh, therefore uh, the work was uh, given the Nobel Prize. So we will stop it at this stage uh, today and uh, take up some other aspects of uh, asymmetric reduction next time. Till then uh, you can uh, study these uh, things which I have told today and look at it and generate questions which you can ask me later on when there is a live interaction or post me whenever it is uh, needed. Till then bye and thank you.